I'm Dr. Manuel Astruc. I'm a board-certified psychiatrist. I help entrepreneurs who are suffering from depression get back to being energetic, uh, productive, and very confident. I found out that trying to be successful almost completely ruined me. It, it completely led to burnout for me. So 12 or 13 years ago, uh, after many years of gradually getting more and more burnt out, I, I got to the point that I just could not go on any longer. Um, I was stressed out, I was exhausted, I was detached from my work more and more, and I was getting bitter and cynical, and I was really starting to lose effectiveness at work, which are all the, the hallmarks of burnout, and what had led to that was that I considered myself a, a very hard worker, and my successful private practice was busting at the seams whenever I needed any extra money for household expenses or, or whatever, um, I could just add another hour of patience. And over time, I was seeing uh, 12 hours a day of, of patients, five or six days a week. So I, I had every other day, every other Saturday that I was uh, seeing patients. And it was just not sustainable. And I finally hit a wall and I couldn't go on. Um, and what happened was that in August, uh, on August 24th, 2008, my twin sister Magdalena passed away. She'd had a brain tumor. Uh, that she died from, and she'd been sick for three years. And shortly after she died, I was sitting in a dark room, looking at a picture of her, and in the picture, she's just smiling, she's beaming. You can't tell that she's wearing a wig, because she's going through chemotherapy. And it was just so striking to me how miserable I was, and how she had handled the, the last years of her life with, with grace and a smile on her face. And that was a moment in time when I committed to enjoying the ride no matter what. So my recovery from burnout started by um, a mental switch. While I was burnt out, I was so focused on all the things that we can't control, that I couldn't control. And that's a hallmark of burnout. Burnout is an occupational syndrome that's brought about by you know, an ineffective strategy for dealing with work stress. And with work stress, there's so much that we can't control. Even as a psychiatrist where I had control of my schedule, I'd gotten to the point where I couldn't really back off. But the first change that I made was to look for the things that I could control, the low-hanging fruit. And the low-hanging fruit for me was first changing my attitude. I didn't allow myself to wallow in all the negative thoughts and uh, uh, I put up blinders is what I call it to the uh, negativity that was in my head. Thoughts still came up, but I was focused on what am I going to do about it? What am I going to start doing different? I cut out negativity from the news. I stopped even listening to sports radio. I loved listening to sports radio on my way into work, but over time, there were more commercials and more drama. It was less about excellence, and it was actually a frustrating experience. I started listening to podcasts and learning and growing and changing. The next set of things that I changed was more physical. Uh, I changed my diet, and I just changed one meal at first. Didn't make a big radical reboot, but I just changed the breakfast that I was having. Instead of running by Dunkin' Donuts and grabbing coffee and a bagel, I started making a smoothie in the morning. And I started working out. And in years previously, every time I went to work out, I would start this one hour regimen that was really intense and it would last about a week or two and then I would just fall off the wagon. And what I did this time around, just through uh, luck, was a two minute routine. And I figured I can do two minutes of exercise every single day, no matter what, pretty easily. And what happened was that stuck and it ended up being, you know, over the long run, you know, I have 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour routines that I can do depending on what my schedule is, but that's been sustainable over the last 12 years. 
The things that I discovered as I got better and better from my burnout, you know, I've called the happiness rules. And what we're talking about is, you know, what are the factors that help an individual to flourish? And the happiness research has a, a menu of items that you check, and if you have these menu items, you know, they are what is associated with flourishing. I've got four big buckets that I use, four rules. Number one is learning and growing. Looking at the future, making your future bigger than your past, and always staying at the edge of your comfort zone in terms of, you know, skill acquisition, and they can be in different things. So for me, it wasn't just psychiatry that I was studying anymore, but it was business, it was leadership, marketing, um, but always learning and growing. When I was burnt out, I was doing the same thing day after day after day, and there wasn't that much room for growth or for continued excellence and in, in growing in my field. Number two is connection. You know, our relationships are so incredibly important. There is just a wealth of data that our level of physical health and our happiness as we age are completely related to the level of our relationships and connections. So doubling down on relationships, doubling down on community, and doubling down on uh, contributions that, that you're actually making, uh, super important for happiness and flourishing. Three, blazing your own trail. So this is where you look at, you know, what you're curious about, what you're naturally very, very good at, like your unique abilities, um, and what your purpose is. And it took me years to figure this out, but what happens is that you stop living life by design, living life by default, and you go to life by design. And the last piece is really this commitment to enjoying the ride no matter what. That to me was such a critical decision when my sister passed away. It was a line in the sand, a moment of truth. We have the ability to choose our attitude no matter what. And that was just uh, incredibly, incredibly important. The piece that's so important to remember is that we're told to pursue success and then we'll be happy. And what I'm suggesting to you and what worked for me is to make happiness the engine that's going to drive your success.